In this case, we're given a graph of a function f. And we're told a couple of things about it. One, it is continuous. And two, it is made up entirely of a semicircle segment and straight line segments. We'll be able to use that when we have to geometrically calculate some areas under the curve. But then we're given one other curious piece of information, namely the function that the problem we'll be discussing is not the function f, but is in fact the function g of x, which is de uh, defined as the integral of the function they've shown us beginning at 1 up to the value x. Well, this clearly calls for a thorough understanding of the fundamental theorem of calculus. And we may as well just think about it right here at the beginning before we jump in. And that is, what corresponds to these three functions in this scenario? Well, the thing to realize is that f of x is really, in this case, the g of x that they're talking about. Okay, But, and here's the important part, g prime of x by the fundamental theorem of calculus is f of x. So what's going here is f of x. And so the second derivative of g is really f prime. That's crucial. So let's go ahead and see what we can do now that we have that information. Part A asks us to find g of 2 and g of negative 2. Well, again, I'm just going to write in here that the graph they're giving us is equivalent to saying this is the graph of g of x prime. This is g prime of x that we're looking at. And so in order to calculate g of 2, I have to start at some known point and then calculate the indefinite integral that begins at a known point and goes to 2. And similarly for g of negative 2. Well, the known point that we're going to use, let's change the color on that. The known point that we're going to use, we're going to say that g of x equals g of 1 plus the integral from 1 to x of g prime of t dt. But g prime is f of t dt. Now, why did I choose 1? Well, it's because g is defined as being an integral of a certain function from 1 to x. And so we know that g of 1 is 0. g of 1 is 0 because the width from 1 to 1 is 0, and an integral over a width of 0 is going to be 0. So what we're really finding is the signed area, because this is uh, a function given to us only in geometric terms. So we're going to start out at 1, and we're going to find the change in signed area as we go from 1 to 2. So let's start with this. Looks like we've got this triangle area to find. It's got a width of 1, a height of negative a half, and so 1 half base times height is going to give us a signed area of negative 1 quarter. Okay. So g of 2, the integral from 1 to 2, gives us negative a quarter. g of negative 2 is, again, we can think of as g of 1 plus the integral from 1 to negative 2 of f of t dt. 
Now, because we're going backwards, our signed areas are reversed. So first, we have this signed area to traverse. Okay, this is half of a circle. And what's the radius of this circle? Well, the radius is one. The area of a circle is pi r squared, so pi times one squared, or pi would be the area of a complete circle if we were to be talking about that. But we're only talking about the area of half the circle. And so that's going to be pi over two. Now, the area here <coughs> is negative. It's underneath the horizontal axis. But because we're traversing the problem from one to negative one, it enters with the opposite sign. So that's going to be pi over two. Now we have to add to that the area that we find from negative one to negative two. Here's another triangle. It's got a width of one, it's got a height of three. We take half of that, that's three halves. It's above the horizontal axis, so its signed area is positive, but we are traversing from negative one to negative two, so we're going in the opposite direction that we ordinarily would, and so we've got negative three halves. And that's really it, that's our answer for A. B asks us to find g prime of negative 3 and g double prime of negative 3. Well, we've already ascertained that g prime of negative 3 is nothing more nor less than f. And here we are at negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. At negative 3, f has a height of 2. g prime of negative 3 equals 2, reading directly from the graph. Because uh, g prime of x is f of x. g double prime of negative 3 equals the slope of f at x equals negative 3. Now, what is this slope? Well, it's the rise over the run, but we can see that we're both going up by 2 and over by 2, and so the slope is 1. which is 1. And if you need any more supporting evidence, you could write a y2 minus y1, 3 minus 1, over x2, negative 2 minus negative 4. Okay? It's time for part C. See what needs to be calculated there. The x coordinate has a horizontal tangent line. So we're looking for, in part C, where uh, g prime is zero. Okay? So let's just write it like this. g of x, having a horizontal tangent line, is the same as f of x equals 0. So where does that occur? This occurs at x equals negative 1 and 1.
Now, let's decide whether g has a relative min, a relative max, or neither. Okay. At x equals negative 1, g prime of x, or f, uh, well, what happens to f? It changes sign from positive to negative. From plus to minus, as we move left to right. Therefore, I'm just using that uh, symbol as therefore, since it changes from positive to negative, it's a relative um, max. at x equals negative 1. At x equals 1, g prime, or f, does not change sign. See? We have negative values of f as we come into 1, and we still have negative values as we exit 1 in moving left to right. Therefore, it's neither a relative max nor min. Finally, in D, points of inflection. Points of inflection occur when the function's second derivative changes sign, okay? Let's just write that out. G double prime changes sign or or when f prime changes sign. Again, because g prime of x is f of x by the fundamental theorem. And where does that occur? Well, the um, f prime is this slope, it's positive here, it becomes negative here. x equals negative 2. Now the slope is negative here, and it continues negative here. Here the slope is negative, here the slope is positive, so we have another point of inflection at x equals 0. And finally, here the slope is positive, and then it becomes negative, so we have our last point of inflection at 1.